In this example, we're going to continue to look at the motional EMF, the sliding bar, and we're going to look at a specific example with uh, numbers given for the B field, the resistance in the coil, uh, the length uh, that we're going across, and the, the speed in the first problem, in the first case, where we want to have the bar move at a constant speed. And we know from our last page of notes that the constant speed is a problem, because if we just flick the bar to the right, as we saw on our last page, let me go back real quick and just revisit that. Let me erase my markings. We saw that if we just give it a flick, we get the magnetic force, ILB, down here at the bottom that we had from our last page of notes. So we saw that the acceleration is not constant. It's going to decelerate and come to a stop. So let's figure out what we have to do to not have it come to a stop to keep it moving at a constant speed. So we want the resistor, we want the bar to move at a constant speed of 3 meters per second. Well, the beginning part of the analysis is the same. The bar is moving to the right, the flux is increasing uh, into the paper. As the bar goes to the right, nature wants to fight that increase, generates the counterclockwise current that we just talked about on our last page of notes. So B, B induced is out of the paper, I induced is counterclockwise. So our flux integral B dot N hat dA becomes negative uh, B times A. When we take negative D flux DT, we get a positive and that positive corresponds to clockwise. So there's our I'm sorry, counter, counter, clockwise, there's our positive thumb out of the paper, and we get our same result. We get the fact that the induced EMF is BLV, just as we had, because our base, our x-coordinate, is the only thing changing as a function of time. We now have numbers to plug in, so we can get the value for the induced EMF, and notice we're plugging, we're not, we're not plugging in just an initial V sub zero. Here we're being told we want to keep it going at three. So to keep it going at a, at a speed of three, that would mean the induced EMF is going to be the 2.25 times 10 to the minus three volts. We have V equals IR, so that will be the current that is generated due to the induced EMF. We still have IL cross B, so we have the IL, right? We have the I L cross B into the paper, so the magnetic force is still going to be to the left, but we can keep it moving at a, a speed of 3 if the force we're pulling with equals F sub B, so that's exactly what we do. So we say the force pull uh, for part A has to equal the I L cross B, so we solve for I L cross B and we get 4.2 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. So hopefully that part makes sense. So now in part B of what I'm looking at here is let's go solve that differential equation and find out what is going on if we take the force pull out of the problem. So we're going to remove the force pull. So no external force, for, force pull is present for part B. So part B is down here. We have no force pull present, so we have exactly what we had on our previous page of notes. The IL cross B equals MA equals MDVDT. We plug in for the current BLV on R as we did before, right? We have BLV on R comes from this equation, right? So here we have the induced EMF is BLV. So the induced EMF is BLV equals IR. When we solve for I, we get BLV on R. And the LB comes from our LB that is in our force equation. So here we have our differential equation. The key to the di solving the differential equation is really in this very first step, not taking the acceleration down to d, d squared x dt squared, leaving it as dv dt. Because as you can see then, the mathematics uh, falls out and becomes very easy relative to the calculus that's involved. 
when we solve for dv dt, we follow separation of variables. We're going to take the v and bring it over with the dv. The, d, the dt comes up by itself. Uh, notice this b squared, l squared on mr becomes our time constant, our tau. So we are going to have exponentials going on, right? So when the time, whenever the time rate of change of a variable is proportional to the variable itself, you have exponential happenings. So we have an exponential solution. We'll have our time constant that we've seen before. Uh, 1 on V dV is natural log of V, fi final minus initial. Notice I don't let the final go to zero. I want it to be a function of V. So do not plug in zero for V final, right? If I want to plug in zero for V final, I'll do it after I have my solution. So we have V final minus V initial minus T on tau, ln of V on V naught, natural log of A over natural log, uh, natural log of A minus natural log of B is natural log of A over B. Let E operate on both sides. And we've seen our time constant type solution before, so we know the meaning of the time constant is still that 63% uh, to either uh, V max or at uh, that time, right? Tau is always a specific time, so that's a number of seconds. In this case, it's going to be the number of seconds where the you've lost 63% of the speed. So we're decaying in speed. So, And we've seen these solutions before. So please make sure you have the complete solution here. The mathematics that we've looked at, let me clean my page up here a little bit, so pause it if you want anything that I added during our discussion. And let me clean it up here and erase my additional pen marks. So please make sure you copy everything down, pause the page, get everything that is here. Most especially, uh, we need to talk in class about anything that's in this second part of the solution that you don't understand because the mathematics here is very doable for a test question because you can see how short it is. Uh, but you definitely need to know and focus on the fact that the acceleration just becomes dv dt. You're going to separate variables, generate your time constant. So it takes a little bit of practice and, and maybe looking at a couple of times to really let it uh, sink in. And of course, we'll talk about it in class.